what is going on. Well, I decided to, I mean, incorporate some of your designs into the newest Pelton turbine. So now it sits horizontally. The nozzle should hit a little bit more uh, tangen tangentially to the buckets, and we'll see, because now it won't have the resistance of it coming up. Like, it'll be able to spin a little bit more freely. So we're gonna just test it. It's gonna be a quick video, because I think I'm, I've decided that I might go back back home for the weekend, so, but I want to make sure to get this video. I've had some car troubles, that's why. It's been a little bit, but without any further ado, let's see if we can get 12 watts. I mean, 12 volts, but 20 watts. So there's gonna be a lot of air in the line because I've had the um, water off for the winter, but today's about 60 degrees, so it's a beautiful warm day. Hopefully this hose isn't kinked, but let's turn it on and see how it is. I have no load hooked up, so it's just gonna be, um, it's just gonna be just the voltage at first. Yeah, there's a few kinks, but. Sounds like it's working. I don't think there's any kinks. Let's see what we got. With it being uh, in this housing, I can't tell, but if you see, it might be more efficient if I made this round. So, uh, yeah, let me let me get the load hooked up, and if you guys have any other uh, ideas you want me to uh, borrow, then uh, let me know. But let me get the load on it, and we'll see. It's, like I said, today's gonna be a really quick video, but I wanted to try and get out there. So I'll let it run for a few seconds while I hook up the load. Okay, we'll All right, it'll be hard to show you both, but you'll see, when I hook this up, you're gonna hear a drop in power. And that's because of uh, the load resistance on the motor. All right. You guys ready? Should drop. All right, it did drop. It dropped down to about oh, nine volts. And it's pushing about 12 watts of power. Let's see. I wonder if I give it a little angle. Wow, the focus is horrendous. It's a 12 volt, 25 watt heating pad, so there you go. So what I think I need is either a better nozzle or uh, more pressure because every time we put the load on, it drops to about nine volts and we want to get it up to about uh, 12 volts of power constant, regardless of the load. So, I mean, this is pretty warm already. There we go, so. If you guys have any ideas, what I think on the next revision, what I'm gonna do is um, I might try and split it into getting two nozzles. I'm gonna make the housing round, so if that water's splashing, but to uh, really see what's happening here, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put the box on its side and just disconnect the power so we can see if it's hitting it correctly. Like, I wanna make sure that it's working, you know? A lot of people have commented that if it's splashing off to the sides or if it's splashing a certain way, it's not efficient and I would like to get this as efficient as possible. So let me do that and I'll be right back. A lot of people have also mentioned using a different uh, kind of motor, which I'm completely open to. It's just, if you guys have a motor, I think this one's about like 2,500 RPM is where it's making its power. So if you guys have a motor that's low torque but can produce a large amount of power at around 2,000 RPMs I'd like to shoot for, let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm not sure, I don't really want to go with a stepper motor just because, um, the amount of power like I want a higher amperage motor so then it kind of has to be a bigger motor but excuse me I want to work on a lower rpm so let's test this see how it looks on this side hopefully it's, it's kind of at a weird angle well now it's it's really slow because of the amount of water that's just getting cooled in there but this is what I was talking about with that round housing oh so you know what's happening it's actually too angled so it should be over so I have the angle too far into it that it's hitting and splashing off the side. So I might be able to fix that. 
Hold on, let me let me try. All right, so if it's not too blurry, you can see it's actually hitting perfectly and splitting and shooting up and over. Oh, sorry, it's hitting up and over on both sides. And even with the water that's causing the drag on the bottom, you can still kind of you can see it wants to turn even at this very low pressure. But what I'm saying is, the problem is, is it's just dousing me. I think the angle's too strong, so it hits perfectly here, and it wants to push it, but then what's happening is it's going, it's hitting in here, causing too much resistance, and it's not giving full efficiency. I mean, it's like I said, you can see here, it's, even like that, it's, if I dump this water out, it'd probably spin. Maybe not. So it would need a little bit more, but yeah, that's what I think is happening, is it's too sharp of an angle. In oh, oh, oh. Huh. That was a good example. So yeah, so what I might do is I might just heat this up because I just soldered this in, or heated up and melted it. So I might be able to heat this up and turn it a little bit. But you can see I haven't touched the pressure, and now it's still spinning the wheel, even with the force required to push it to the bucket down there. So yeah, I'm gonna, I might try and do that right now. I'm gonna check my laundry, depends how that's going. And then maybe I'll try and do that quickly. But you can see, it seems like this one's a little bit more efficient, but there is still room for improvement with this being around housing and with the nozzle hitting at a more ideal angle. So maybe I'll try and do that quick. I'll be right back. All right, so I've changed the angle a little bit. It is my first time using a soldering iron to weld two pieces of plastic together. So it might not be perfect, but then I'm also worried that I might have gone too far on the angle, but now I don't think I showed it before. You can see now the angle is now more in line with this bucket. So as it hits, it'll come through, hit here, and hopefully it won't just divert into here and shoot off the side, making it inefficient. So I'm going to plug it back and I'm going to hook it back up to the hose. We're going to do another test. And if we have anything over nine volts, then it's good. But what I'll do is I'll do the same thing I did where I put it off to the side and we can see how it looks like from our eyes because a lot of people were very helpful on saying that the reasons why it's not efficient so i'll put that there in case there's because there's much smarter people on here than i am so we'll put it up there i'll show the other angle and then i'll hook it back up to the hose and let's see a power out or power output so this is gonna be the last part if it doesn't work there's just gonna be another part to it i want to keep this one kind of short and i want to try and get on the road so let's head over all right, let's get the water cranked out. First, I'm just gonna do a little, a slow test, just a little bit of pressure, like I did last time. All right, there we go. I kinda wanna see, all right, so it looks like it's still, oh, there's still some air in there. It looks like it's still pretty centered on the, the bucket. All right, let's turn the pressure up and see how it looks now. I mean, other than the water getting hit and splashing out the bottom, this looks to be a lot more efficient with it, uh, less of it coming off the spring there. So, yeah, I'm gonna turn it. It actually appears to have killed the efficiency. It has less voltage than it did before with that design. So I'm gonna just hook up this wire right here and we'll see, I think it's gonna be below nine volts now. I was wrong. I mean, it seems to be about the same. I'll leave it on for another second and see how it does. But, um, okay, I guess it's a little, it's a little bit better. I'll leave it that. That's weird, because when there was no load, the focus is horrendous today. When there was no load, it was actually lower voltage. So, but now that it's come back up, I mean, it seems like it's about the same. So, I think a round housing might be the next step. Oh, let me just turn this off so it's a bit quieter. So I think the next step is gonna have to be a round housing and maybe a different motor. In case you guys are new to this build, this, oh, you can see this is not, might need another, uh, another bolt or another housing or adapter. It's a free energy 
permanent magnet motor generator, but this is like the same kind of motor you'll find in like a Razor scooter. So I mean, I might have to do like maybe a pulley type system to increase the speed, or I might, uh, maybe gears or something. I don't know, maybe I'll try 3D printing some gears, but if you guys have a suggestion for a motor or a way to increase this power without it being super, super complex, please let me know because with the load on it and an increased load, that's only a 25 watt, 25 watt, I think it's more like 20 um, load, it's, I wanna be able to keep 12 volts. I actually, ideally, it's a 200, or it's a, it claims to be a 350 watt motor, which if you have enough pressure, I'm sure that it, it would be capable of doing it. I mean, those wires do look a little thin for 350 watts, but let me know what you guys wanna see and I'll try and make it happen. Thanks for the suggestions though, and See you in the next video, I guess.